Hi friends, welcome to Law Chat with Gerja. I'm Gerja Bhargav Patel, your host for Law Chat, and I am so excited for you to join us today. I have some amazing guests on Law Chat, and they're here to share their experiences and entrepreneurial journey with us, and through their storytelling, mentorship with us, because that is the whole point. We are all entrepreneurs and we're all on a journey and learning from one another is the best way for us to move forward in our journey as well. And I have amazing guests who are so willing and ready to share their stories with us, their challenges and their victories and their achievements and also their mindset. I just can't wait to share that with you. And I also just can't wait to have that conversation with them. It's such a privilege to have each and every one of them here with us today. And also it's such a privilege to have you listening in and tuning in. So let's dive in to Law Chat with Gerja. Hi friends, welcome to Law Chat. Do you remember a time when you were trying to launch something new or put a product out there or a service out there and the overwhelm and the stress kind of overshadowed all the joy that was supposed to come with the launch? Well, today I have Tawana Taylor. She is the founder and CEO of her boutique business consulting company, Bootstrap Dreams LLC, where she's dedicated to making complex things simple and eliminating entrepreneurial overwhelm through business management strategy, accountability coaching, project management, and virtual assistant services through her done method. I can't tell you, I feel like I need you because every single time I'm doing a launch, I'm losing my mind in, internally, if not externally. But she has earned numerous awards and recognition for her leadership, exemplary service, and carries the credential of certified project management professional. I think that's a registered trademark of PMP. I am just so happy to have you here. Welcome, Tawana. Your energy is contagious. I love talking to you. We've had a couple times where we've had to chat. Mm -hmm. And today, even before starting this uh, recording, I just love that we just started on the note that we did. So much joy yeah. exudes from you. And Thank just happy to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The sentiment is so mutual. And it's just like good vibes. Good vibe. You guys can't see what I'm looking at right now, all <laughs> fabulousness on the other side of the screen. I'm telling you, you've got to get with Gerja. I love it. I love it. Oh, Tawana, <laughs> well, actually, they can see us on YouTube. So go to YouTube and watch us. <laughs> hey, even better. <laughs> Oh, this is so mutual. You were, I mean, honestly, like I remember when I first met you and yes, I was literally sitting in the car for carpool Yeah, and you were also managing life and work and then having this call with me. Yes. And at that time, I'm like, gosh, she's so beautiful, like literally oh. inside and out. And it was just so nice to talk to you and so refreshing and such ease. And I think that really just kind of extends into your business because that mm -hmm. I think naturally is just how you are and, or maybe how you became, I don't know. And we're going to learn about that. Right, just we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's so true though, because you know, when we're trying to sell a feeling, like mm -hmm. even in my business, I am not, I'm not selling a feeling or in that sense, but more so like, this is how you're going to feel at the end of this experience. Mm -hmm. But how can you give that unless you have it to give? And I mm. just love that you have it to give it. So tell me how this all started. It's a blessing. And I, I, I'm, I'm like, yes, affirmation come through just when you don't know you need it. <laughs> right? It's like feeling that bucket that you didn't know needed to be filled. How did it come through? Oh my gosh. So I like to, I'm a self-proclaimed, if you will, serial optimist. For some reason, there is an innate ability in me to see the, the glass half full rather than half empty, right? Where most people see problems. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm human. My initial response is, ugh, right? My initial response is like, we're going we're gonna to sit here and we're going to acknowledge we're going to give ourselves permission to say, it sucks. I don't like it. I don't want <laughs> I it. This. I didn't ask for this. Now that I've got that out of my system, what can we do about it? Because we already can clearly see what we can't, right? So we're not going to focus on all the things that we can't. Life challenges are inevitable. What can we do? There's an opportunity mm -hmm. here. Now, how can we feel it? 
And then who do we need and what do we need to make it happen? Like, that's just, that's just it. We have to keep it moving. That's the reality of living is how can we keep things going? Not, not, not steamroll it, not push it under the rug, but how can we get through what's mm-hmm. happening or what we envision to be happening? And there's more than one way. And that's mm-hmm. the beauty, right? And living, that's the beauty in collaborating. That's the beauty in integrating that people, skills, systems, tools, like all this collectively can mm. shape our reality and we can create that. Yeah. We can create that. What we don't love, we can create what we love. What we don't prefer, we can find another way right? We don't have to just be unhappy. We don't have to just be stuck. We don't have to be any of those things. We can absolutely create and shape our Mm -hmm. reality to be what we need and also sprinkle in what we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That is just amazing. It's like, I'm talking to you and I'm getting some chills. And I think it's because you and I are like, I also am this hopeless optimist. And yeah, I agree with you. Things can suck. And that's the reality of it. Like it sucks. You acknowledge it, but you got to move forward. You can't sit there. You can't pitch a tent. You can't build your home there. No. I I say that all the time. I'm like, it's okay to acknowledge. You need to acknowledge it because Mm -hmm. then it'll be suppressed. And then later on, it'll come out as more anxiety, (sighs) more anger. But when you're at peace with it and you move forward, you're finding solutions now. You can't mm-hmm. keep living that over and over again. And I just love everything you say because it truly resonates with my beliefs and my thinkings also. Mm-hmm. And it just, I think I just get so much energy from you just because we're so aligned in that yeah. thought process. And yes. I, I love it. And I love that as a mentor and as a coach, you are spreading that good news, right? You're good spreading- news. You're spreading that joy and those blessings to your community. Mm-hmm. And so how did you get into that? Like, where did you see that opening? You're like, oh, this is where I need to be. Yeah. So it wasn't totally intentional. And that is a word like intentional and grace. You will hear me use so much in pretty much every encounter that we have because it's necessary. It's essential, dare I say, right? I genuinely believe nothing just happens. And so throughout life, right? It's like, how did you get here? If we had to pull out some of the the good, bad and unpretty things, right? So I'm a daughter of the army. My dad was military. That brought me a lot of culture. That brought me a lot of opportunity to meet different people, to meet different, you know, again, cultures, languages, beliefs, um, locations. So that expounds, you know, it just really enhances perception, right? Um, um, and what, what the world really does mean, right? The world is a rainbow is not just a song for me. Like it's truly my reality, right? Yeah. Do, li- do life in community. Then you have the, now the rehabilitation that did not happen well coming out of the military for my dad. And so with that came troubles with alcoholism and Mm -hmm. with drug addiction and it's been several years we are all fully grown (laughs) you know my mother my father my brother myself we're full full adults now it is still something that my family deals with right and then now fast forward with that my parents ultimately divorced after 28 years of marriage and so for Mm -hmm. any child seeing their parents their family fall apart is tragic right yeah Fast forward, you relocate, you go to college, you know, you check all the boxes, you do all the things, you check all the boxes, I get married, we build our dream home, we have a baby, and now I'm facing my own deteriorating reality. Mm -hmm. I end up, right, encountering divorce through my marriage. And so it's like, you find ways to continuously identify reasons to live and recognize what's real, right? And I'm not saying that those things weren't. We're people, we make decisions, we evolve, we change. Our realities happen, right? And based on decisions, nothing is isolated. Yet we can decide of these unpretty things that happen, there's still so much value in me, the person. There's still so much life that's worth living. So whatever your it is, that it does not have to define you, even though it definitely will help shape you. It definitely will help you draw out 
what are the characters in me that show up when things aren't ideal, when things aren't pretty, when people are looking at me and, and anticipating that I'm going to fall apart the most and the strength continues to show up even when I'm not seeking mm -hmm. to be strong. It's just, it's just a gift. You wake up and you're like, I got to keep going. Hmm. You know, my child is depending on me. My team is depending on me. My, and I'm not trying to be superwoman and wear a cape, but I want to be living, right? I don't want to just exist. I want to keep yeah. going because this yeah. season will pass. And so it's because of those types of experiences that have continuously put me in a position of positivity, right? Mm -hmm. I don't even I understand influence. I don't like to say influencer because I by no means have this huge outrageous following, right? I'm more for building a community than an audience because I can, you can have a huge audience and nobody does anything. Mm -hmm. You can have a small community and everybody's taking action yeah. in their yeah. way, right? Mm -hmm. Their big thing happen and connecting with you in a way that makes sense. So it's always been some type of coordination, some type of, you know, collecting people, if you will, like gathering them together, finding, oh, you need you, you and you, have you guys met? Oh, great. Yes. You guys need to meet because, <laughs> right. This makes sense. And oh, do you know that person? Oh, well, I talked to her the other day and actually what you have, she needs and what she has, the, your friend that we talked about the last time we were together needs. And yeah, I'll just do an email introduction or a voice memo, Facebook messenger, LinkedIn. You let me know how it needs to go down and together you guys go be great. Right. And all my life, it's been that through friends, through professionalism. And so when project management came into the picture after undergrad, it was like, you mean to tell me I can make a career out of doing this? Like <laughs> matching people with who they need to succeed. And after 15 years of professional experience total, but 10 years particularly in uh, state government is where I really leaned in to project management. And so that's where the PMP came about and talking about starting from the bottom people starting mm -hmm. from the bottom, working my way up to enterprise project consultant and realizing, wow, now that I've spent so much time here and progressed in so many ways, and now that life has changed for me, it's time for this to change too, right? Like mm -hmm. all the milestones have been met, all of the positions and divisions and offices have been encountered, all of the statewide travel has happened. Now it's time for Tawana to focus on Tawana and how she can escalate and elevate this reality, mm -hmm. elevate this connecting people with who and what they need and do it in a way that allows creativity, that gives the autonomy, that has the flexibility and that gun it is just fun to darn do. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so that's really how Bootstrap Dreams came about because people would tap into me and say, hey, you know that thing you did for the job? I have an idea. Can you help me? And I'm like, yeah, it's project management. We can do that. We can put that to <laughs> anything. Like, what do you want to do? Right. Uh -huh. And then make a decision. If you're not ready to make a decision, stop talking to me. But mm -hmm. if you're ready to make a decision, I'm your girl. <laughs> I, <laughs> let's, let's do this. <laughs> wow. There, that was packed with so many powerful words mm -hmm. and powerful mindsets or thought process. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Whatever. What it was packed with, it was so powerful. Like anybody listening to this, I don't know how they can't walk away with feeling the chills from what you're saying, <laughs> because truly it is that, right? The challenges that we face are not what define us. What no. defines us is how we overcome them. And I feel like a lot of times we don't even know the power of our inner strength, our God-given power and strength that's given to us. And you know, I always ask my guests this question, especially towards the end, but what anchors you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when things are just feeling really crazy and I've always had some beautiful answers coming my way. And it's so interesting also because every, a lot of people have different answers. It's not yeah. always the same. Mm -hmm. And, but I truly feel that we don't, we all have it in us. But we sometimes don't know how to muster that strength. Yeah. And generally, when we are facing trauma or tragedy, we, we need to muster that strength. Not everybody can or does. But when you do, you realize how amazing you yeah. are yeah. and how the amazing gifts that God has given you to mm -hmm. overcome. And I think it's easy to say. Yeah. 
I know it's easy to say, and I know mm-hmm. that walking that path can be tough, mm-hmm. but I also know that you can walk it. And I also yep. know that you can triumph. Yep. And so I, I just love what you said, because, you know, a lot of times we feel like, oh, this happened to me, this happened to me, that happened to me. And you allow that to overwhelm you and define you. Mm-hmm. And it becomes those moments where you say, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z. Or I can't run because I hurt myself ages ago. Okay, Mm -hmm. don't run, but walk. Let's start walking. Let's start doing things you can do, right? Mm -hmm. You can't run. Get over that. Let's walk. Let's, let's, you know, do the elliptical. Do the things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where sometimes we lose sight. I hate to interrupt this awesome conversation, but I have to stop and talk with you about the number one thing I'm asked about by entrepreneurs contracts. They're vital to any business relationship and to protect your business. But I also know that entrepreneurs, especially when you're starting up, money is tight. But I would never want you to compromise on a strong legal foundation. So enter your contractbuddy.com, a website created by me with contract templates created and drafted by me and fellow industry partners. They're ready to use and easy to plug in immediately. And they are not restricted to any specific state. YourContractBuddy.com is sponsoring this episode, and you and your listener can get 10% off right now with code LAWCHAT. Yes, you heard me right. 10% off right now with code LAWCHAT. And now, back to our awesome conversation. First of all, I love the name of your business, Bootstrap Dreams. It is like <laughs> the coolest name out there. And I actually had a question. I, you know, I kind of, I, I kind of, you know, I, I don't kind of, I absolutely do research on every guest coming in just mm-hmm. to kind of also make sure that I'm prepared for questions and also, yeah. um, but I like things to be very organic. However, mm-hmm. I did have one question written now saying, how did you come up with that name? I love that name. It is so cool. Thank you. It's funny because that name So literally, like when you think about bootstrap, particularly in business, most people think like make something out of nothing, Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of the people who encountered me, because when this came about, um, literally at the worst time ever, folks, at the worst time ever, did this business come about? I didn't know at the time, though, that it was going to be the worst time ever. I was sitting up in my bed and I had realized the eight year small business that I initially started was kind of come to an end because again, life shifts. I had become a mother. I was already a wife. I had become a mother. I was still working my business full time. I had completed grad school. I wanted to start the PMP journey. And I was like, I'm not done with entrepreneurship. I mean, that's eight years. That's eight years that I didn't intend, (laughs) but happened, right? I turned, I turned a hobby into a business making handcrafted jewelry. And I was like, somebody's going to need this information. And I like the journey of entrepreneurship. I like meeting people. I like helping turn people's vision into reality. Like that's the thing. Now, how can I do this? If I do this another time around, how can I do this? And it means something because no offense, I was really good at making jewelry. Mm -hmm. I was really good at making jewelry. However, it wasn't uh, like, a fulfilling thing. Mm -hmm. It was just something that I could do. My grandmother always called me a jack of all trades. So I just did it because I could. And it was nostalgic because it, most of it was for weddings and you know, it meant people still have memories. They still send me pictures. Remember this? And I'm like, I don't, but that's great. (laughs) Right. But so it's like, when I go into business again, what can I do that really means something for people? What can be transformational for people? And then just a few months after I decided to register it with the secretary of state and, you know, do all the formal things that you're encouraged to do when you're starting a business, that's when the divorce came. Mm. I was like, what? Mm. (laughs) Like, just when I think I'm going to be fully supported and have that backup to, you know, kind of launch and, and, and figure it all out. Uh, I got to find another way to do it. I'm going to have to keep working a little while longer. I'm going to have to postpone, you know, uh, studying for the PMP. I'm going to have to, because what I have to do is be a mother. I'm, that's not optional for me. And I'm going to keep doing this job because I love it. And we're in the midst of some really heavy things and my team needs me and I need them. So bootstrap dreams. I like it. It's going to have to wait. But the bootstrapping part came from something, turning something right from nothing. Mm-hmm. And the people who came to me, Girja, had nothing. 
The people who are like, I got an idea for an app. Do you think you can help me launch it? I got an idea. I, I, know, I know you're not an author and I know you don't publish books, but can you help me get into the practice of writing? Like there has to be like a systematized way that I can do this mm. so that I show up consistently enough to actually get the book written, right? Mm -hmm. Like start developing yeah. content so that we can even organize it into what chapters <laughs> could be, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I want to, I want to do a podcast. How, what, what does that look like? How do I start? Where do I begin? And I'm like, Psh, project management folks, let's just make it happen. Like, let's just start with the, let's just start with the what, like, of course you're overwhelmed because you're starting with how, if right. you don't get know what, and if you can't answer the five W's, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Who is it for? Where are you going to show up? And when are you going to pop off? You can forget how. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not, Psh, you're going to always be, <laughs> conflicted, confused, overwhelmed with how, because you don't yet know what needs to happen. Mm. So give yourself permission to plan, even though a plan is a roadmap, not a guarantee. That's the beautiful part. There's mm -hmm. more than one way to get there, honey. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's where the bootstrap came from. There wasn't a lot of money to be invested in by them. And even for my business, for me, there wasn't a lot of um, go to family members and ask them to th give you 10 grand to throw at a wall and see what sticks. People were literally scrapping from nothing to make mm -hmm. something but because we did it practically you know through what's the minimum viable thing that you need you have things that you must have there are, then there are things that you should have mm -hmm. and then there are things that you would like to have mm -hmm. let's start with what you absolutely must have and get moving oh and wow that's the bootstrap you know yeah. to the dream like yeah the dream can happen don't be discouraged mm -hmm. more than one way that is so brilliant. And thank you for your candidness because I think a lot of times we see the end result and then uh -huh. a lot of times the journey is not shared or even it's not shared. And, and that's what this podcast is for because I truly want to dig into people's journey mm -hmm. so other entrepreneurs can actually feel it and know that they're not alone. A no. lot of us get financial issues. A lot of us are trying to figure out how to make that next payment, mm -hmm. but we still need to keep moving forward in our business. And then yep. you start figuring out how to negotiate, figuring That's how right. to manipulate, but still end up at the end result. And so, That's yeah, right. the journey might be one roadmap that you wrote, mm -hmm. but it can definitely look different as you go. And That's I think right. giving ourselves grace, mm -hmm. absolutely, to make those movements and then being intentional of those movements is very yep. important. And That's I think, important. yeah, and I just love your transparency about that. Yeah. Now I know that you have this uh, D O N E formula, done oh, formula, yeah. <laughs> and I love how you wrote. You know the five what what's we need to get those answered, which is so mm -hmm. true because it's like clutter. There's yes. so much clutter here. And just yesterday, I was talking to another guest that that's going to be aired later on about a business plan, which is a great way to start with the what's too. Mm -hmm. It's you don't even have to make it formal. It's just no. something simple. Write it down though. Put it out on paper. That's right. So what is done and how do you use that to help your clients and your community? Yes. Yeah, so the done formula, and it is an acronym. It's an acronym, just like it sounds done, D-O-N-E. And what it allows you to do is one, redefine success for yourself, right? Redefine success for your vision. Because a lot of what we thought success was, particularly those of us who are going into entrepreneurship after traditional employment or during traditional employment, we have to redefine it because what served us then doesn't necessarily serve us the same way mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. And so it allows you to redefine success. And it also leads you into the understanding and the absolute belief that do it yourself doesn't mean do it alone. And so here's the acronym. The D is twofold. We talked about defining, right? Mm -hmm. You absolutely can, but good luck in really activating your how if you haven't yet defined what it is that you're doing, right? So what do you want to do? Those five W's. Who are you doing it for, right? So it needs to benefit someone else, not just you. Why are you doing it? Where will you show up? Because your customers are everywhere, but not everyone is your customer. And when are you going to make it happen, right? When people use the word project loosely, you know, us project managers, whether we're certified or we're doing it by nature of being practitioners, it makes our skin crawl when you don't have a deadline. 
because then it's not a project. A project must have a defined start and a defined end. So everything you do, that's the intentionality behind it, right? You're, you're deciding, which moves into the other half of the D, is to decide. It's not ideas that we execute, it's decisions. Because the idea without action is what, folks? Put it in the comments. <laughs> a wish, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's simply a wish. But once you decide, I'm going to take the next step. And the next step is, and it doesn't have to be grandiose. Mm -hmm. It can be, I'm going to make a post about this idea or about this, this meetup or about this conversation. I'm going to call, pick up the phone, right? I'm going to purchase this tool that I need, I, this software, this, I'm going to sign up for a free trial, right? Whatever the case may be, once you make that decision, stuff starts happening. You start moving, right? Mm -hmm. Then the O, with your decisions, you own them. You own them. You say to yourself, now, what do I need to do? What adjustments do I need to make in my day-to-day -day life so that I can show up? to this idea so that I can follow through with this decision, this commitment, so that I can have the people around me support it, mm -hmm. right? Do it yourself doesn't mean do it alone, right? Who can help? Does this, does this mean that I sign up for a, um, a meal delivery service so that my family can be fed because the hour and a half I was spending cooking dinner, now I can have it delivered that buys me back at least an hour and then we can sit down and eat dinner together. <laughs> Right. Instead of you throwing the meal on and getting them fed and you skipping dinner because you got to go back and hop on the computer. Right. Like, what do I need? Does companion now cook? Does eldest son or daughter now do the laundry? Like, does mom or, 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 or neighbor or whatever your community looks like, let them bless you. They want to be with you on this journey. Allow them to show up in the ways that they need and understand, remember, your customers are everywhere, but not everyone is your customer. So just because they're family doesn't mean they're going to buy into your service, but they can buy into your morality. They can mm -hmm. buy into the moral support that is just as necessary as the financial means for you to succeed. Amazing. Right? Just the end, right? The end, nurture. Nurture your dream nurture making it a reality, right? It's like a plant. When you water it, right? Or a garden, when you water it, what happens? It blooms. A baby, when it's birthed, you nurture it into adulthood, right? You nurture the child. Mm -hmm. Think of your business, your dream as something that you have to nurture. Again, you decided it. Now you have to own it. Now, what do I need and who do I need so that it can flourish? and thrive do I need to outsource something do I need to schedule something do I need to invite someone in because they have that area of expertise don't spend a whole lot of time strengthening your weaknesses allow other people to operate in their zone of genius and collaborate with you mm -hmm. right so nurture that idea and then the e is executed now that you've identified right you've defined it You've decided where you're going to start. You're owning it because you're making the adjustments and you're inviting people in. You're nurturing it because you're looking at now, you, you've got a plan of action. You've got a strategy that you've put to it. You're seeing how you can make it happen. Now you're going to be intentional and you're going to execute it. And you're going to back all of this stuff up to a calendar so that it actually happens. And so that you can manage reasonable expectations so that the people you have invited to this vision, they know exactly what when and where and how to show up for you, right? Everybody is transparent. Everybody is accountable. Balls aren't being dropped because we've given people assignments that fit them, right? You're not trying to do all the things yourself and you're getting that. it done, folks. You're yeah. getting it done. Yeah. And that is project management in like the simplest form possible. D-O-N-E, yeah. done. That's so fantastic. So fantastic. I mean, it, it also just makes it so simple. Like, okay, it makes that's, it so simple. but it, it, it is that simple when you bring it down to the core. Yes. And, you know, I think after, you know, you define the W's and the who, why, where, what, when, yes. and you decide and, you know, you take the actions because yes. again, again, it's just a wish if there's no actions behind yes. it. And then you own the decisions and then you nurture your dream. And I love how you actually said, 
a lot of times we, we don't allow others to join uh, mm -hmm. if you're not part of the team in the sense of the business and not because there's, you know, there is anything negative about that in your mind, but it's more because it's just like, you're not thinking about it. Right. And I love how you're like, no, others want to be part of the dream, the journey. Mm -hmm. They may not understand it. They may not be your clients, yeah. but they understand you. They're right. invested in you and they yeah. want to see you do well. Mm -hmm. and that's the role that they want to play. And I think that's beautiful because sometimes we might feel like we're being a burden mm -hmm. to the others, or we might feel like we're just giving more stuff on their plate and they already yeah. have a full plate. But then again, we wouldn't know unless we ask. We don't know unless we ask. I said, what's the worst somebody can say? No, big yeah. deal. No is also an acronym. Next opportunity. If they can't or don't want to show up to it, there's another person there's more than one way like for me like whether it's social media whether it's a conversation whether it's whatever it is it's an invitation not an obligation okay first of all first of all can we talk about how <laughs> no is an acronym for next opportunity absolutely wait a second okay after you nurture and after you execute and you hear that, no, it's the next up. I literally have my, my Sharpie <laughs> and my post-it and it's yes. literally going on my board as we speak. <laughs> Absolutely. No is an, let's normalize no as an acronym for next opportunity. Okay. When you hear for no, yes. don't take it personally. Don't look at it as though you're not worthy. You have a no in you too. Right. And you say no to things for reasons that make sense to you. So when other people say no, it's not about you. It's about them. It doesn't make sense for them. And no doesn't mean no forever. It just means no right now. Keep it moving. Yes. <laughs> right. Amazing. Amazing. Keep it's it moving. On, on the wall. <laughs> As yes. We it's not a personal thing. And even if it yeah. is, that's okay. You, what you're doing isn't for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I cannot agree with that more. And I think, you know, we have to separate ourselves sometimes from the emotional aspect of it. Oh, facts over feelings. Most always. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's your business. It is emotional. It reminds me, I don't know if you've seen that movie, you've got mail, but it reminds uh -huh. me when in the movie, the guy, gosh, I can't remember anybody's name right now, but the main character, the actor, mm -hmm. This is embarrassing that I don't remember the names of these people. That's okay. Very, oh, Tom Hanks. I'm like, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. I'm like, I cannot remember, I can't remember their names. Tom Hanks is like, oh, but it's just business. And Meg Ryan's a small business owner. She goes, this is not business. This is emotional. This is uh -huh. not, this is personal. Mm -hmm. And I get that. But yeah. I think like sometimes when clients or, you know, things happen and people take it very personally, yeah. but that's when the issues happen also. And then when you take things too personally, that's when sometimes your business also goes into this black hole of negativity mm -hmm. Yep, and really have to just kind of be a little bit more like sitting back and seeing it as a third party at times also. That's right. Be more data driven. So, so leaders, no matter what size your business is, leaders, when you think about good leaders, leadership, they make data driven decisions, hmm. right? Now I'm not saying don't humanize business. Do do humanize business, but let, let the data drive your decisions. And feedback is both quantitative as well as qualitative, mm -hmm. right? They're not isolated. So when things happen and you get in your feelings, go ahead and give yourself a chance to feel. Don't make any hard decisions, though, yeah. until after you feel and until you have pulled the data that will guide you in the most appropriate direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great advice. That will help you so much and right. it will help you recognize that it's not personal and even if it is personal you can look at the data to say well the character of a person is not so much when things are great but when they are not going favorably <laughs> right doctor i was just paraphrasing uh you know a quote by dr martin luther king and so if the if the ugly shows up when things aren't going well believe it <laughs> Right? It's easy for us to show up and, and be all, you know, happy go lucky when things are, are going favorably. There's no resistance. But the yeah. true strength and character of a person shows up when things aren't going well. Yeah. That's data. Believe it and make your decision. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's 
great advice. And so kind of, I know you have the done method, which is so brilliant. Uh-huh. And that's, you know, you use that with your clients and you talk about that. But what about that one person or other members of the community that before they even get to the done method, they're just mm-hmm. kind of stuck. They're stuck in the negativity. Mm-hmm. How do you help them or the pessimism and how do you help them come out of that? Is there any kind of, you know, advice that you could give on that? So I like to remind people that the personal, especially in, you know, early entrepreneurship or in what I like to call the micro business level of small business, right? Where it might be you and one or a few other people, right? You're not so far into being a a, a company or corporate that you're removed from your personal why, right? I really like to, to let the person know we have to address you. Right. So my clients, one of the first things we talk about before we start setting these amazingly outrageous goals, let's talk about you. And remember, I can only work with what you invite me to. So what's going on with you? Why do you feel stuck? What happened? When did you make the decision that you can't? Mm -hmm. Who told you you can't? Who is that voice? What is that voice? Why did it show up? Let's address that so that we can manage reasonable expectations. Because while you may be, by, by nature of being a professional, you may be ambitious and you may wanna conquer eight things this week, but your dog is sick, your mom needs to have surgery, you know, your toddler is, I don't know, teething. This week, because life, we're gonna focus on three things that you can accomplish because we have to factor in your very real reality. Mm-hmm. Because if your mind isn't on par, I don't care how many strategies I give you. If you don't believe you can tackle them, you won't. Mm-hmm. And we'll be sitting in the same place, same time next week, mm-hmm. having the same conversation. And it's going to be a problem for you. And it's going to be a problem for me. Because now we each aren't getting where we want to be going. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. let's start with addressing the reality, the very real parts of who you are so that we can now move that and, and, and incorporate that into what it is that you aspire to be doing. Oh. You, you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Because yeah. If you're crashing as a person, eventually your camouflage as a professional will come tumbling down. Yeah. Or yeah. If you are soaring as a person, but professionally you're miserable, your person eventually is going to be affected. Yeah. So, and we've seen that with right. some really big, um, you know, online business owners and people oh. who are in the limelight of that when that's not aligned, it mm-hmm. eventually the veils are all uncovered, you know, uncovered. all uncovered and yeah. such power packed information, advice, yeah. wisdom. I've been using this word a lot lately in my podcast is wisdom because wisdom it is like literally you have given so much wisdom today, right? <laughs> you shared it. You have abundantly shared it with us. And I'm just so yeah. thankful for that. But it's true. You know, when our, our mind continuously tells us no, 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 mm-hmm. and not the next opportunity. No, like the right. real hard no that we the hard no, the, the, hard the rejection no, no. The rejection, right? The self deprecating. No, you the, the, know, the no that takes it personally. <laughs> Yeah, so that no, we need to be, uh, we need to be able to overcome that no. And, you know, sometimes I also think that taking that first step Mm -hmm. helps overcome. It may be the smallest, tiniest step. That step could look like getting a book out and reading reading. or getting a journal out Mm -hmm. and writing. Writing. Or talking to a mentor, talking yeah. to somebody that you can lean on and getting, you know, getting some clarity, yes. uh, going to meetings and networking events where, yes. gosh, you might be feeling so uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but once you start doing it and, yeah. and letting yourself be wholeheartedly there, yep. I mean, yep. it, it's changing it's life-changing and it's I life-changing. say it from experience I say it mm-hmm. from the steps I took mm-hmm. also and you know leaning on things that really anchor you and I think yes. that's that's why it's so important to have anchors in life you know it is whether it's family whether it's your faith whether yeah. it is um 
you know, your children, your home, whatever it is, whatever it is, your community, but having an anchor is so Mm -hmm. important, especially when you're just in the black hole of the unknown. Oh, (laughs) a lot of times it is unknown. Yes. You're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Right. It's like something's happening. I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something is happening. And if I could add to that, Girja, it's like, make sure to the best of your ability that what you're anchoring yourself in is intangible, right? Because people come and go. It's not always like, oh, they left me. People change because things happen. Illnesses are real. Life and death is real. It's not always just a change of mind. Mm -hmm. It's it's things that we didn't Mm -hmm. predict that would happen. Things that we didn't know were in our path, right? And, and And it causes a change. So make sure that you Give yourself a chance to redefine success and redefine who you are with and or without that tangible thing, right? Without the house, without the car, without the ring, without the title, without the the clothes, the brand, whatever it is that may have led you at one point in life to show up and feel important. If all of those things were stripped away, are you still worth living? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you still have a life? worth leading? Yes. Does your voice still matter? Yes. Do your experiences still count and can absolutely help someone go from suffering to service? Yes. Can you still serve other people while you're still suffering? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I love that you just said that because when you are in most need of something, Come on. Go out and serve others, right? And when you yep. start serving others, your needs will also get reduced. Oh. And you will actually, all the needs will be filled. Your cups will yes. be filled because yes. now your focus is not on the self anymore. Your focus Boom. is out. Right. And I, I cannot agree with that more. It's, you know, mm-hmm. like when you're praying for better health. Yeah. Pray for others too. Pray yes. for that person that needs you the most. And yes. I can like literally talk to you for another <laughs> few hours. I think I'm, I'll probably talk to you post finishing this up, but totally. uh, <laughs> I, you know, speaking of anchors and all, what is your anchor? What is the thing that holds you steady? So what holds me steady is faith. And I'm not here to, to, to be like, Oh, I'm super religious and I'm overly nope. perfect. Not at all. I don't make a, a, a little G out of rituals. Mm -hmm. Right. For me, it's the belief. It's the knowing, the unlimited knowing that no matter what decision I make, because I'm not going to always make the right one. I'm human. I'm human. I don't know everything, which is why I need a counsel around me. Right. Business and professional. I need to go to other people, sources for their wisdom for their specialty, for their, you know, view outside of what I see, because we're self-critical, right? We're the most critical of ourselves. I need them to help me see sometimes my blind spots. I need to, I need someone to do for me what I do for other people because mm. I'm too in my weeds, right? And so faith is the first thing that anchors me. There's literally <laughs> like a story or a wisdom for everything in life. And you can read it today and you can read it next week and you can read it three years from now and find a totally different meaning because what's happening may be different, right? But the truth is there is a way and you are worthy. So faith is one, family and friends doing life in community. And no, I don't, it's not a million people, <laughs> no. right? It's, it's a really close knit, um, but everyone has a place and it's a yeah. place where that they want to be. And it's a place where, I respect them for their goodness and for what they can bring and for what they're willing to bring, right? So I don't expect everything from everybody. I know who I can go to for uh, dating things. I know who I can go to for motherhood things. I know who I can go to for financial things. I know who I can go to for spiritual things. I know who I can go to for a mental, emotional, right? Like Mm -hmm. everybody, I know who I can go to for meals. I know, right? Like everybody has a thing. It's not one yeah. person for everything. No one person can give you everything. So have a counsel so mm-hmm. they can be anchored, mm. right? Um, and then showing up. And like you, like you talked about, serving people from my place of need. 
one of the most fun opportunities that I offer in my business is the Roadmap to Profit. And it's a workshop. It's a two-day workshop, two hours each day, only two hours each day because life and time, right? But it's helping entrepreneurs package their expertise to profit. Because what do we do, particularly as women, particularly as minorities, we undercharge, we over-deliver, and then it happens to our detriment, mm-hmm. right? Entrepreneurship, then we become a slave to it instead of it becoming the freedom, the, mm-hmm. liberty, the liberation that we intended. And so it's helping them realize with your existing skills and expertise, now how do you package it together and how do you price it so that you have autonomy, mm-hmm. right? It's not predatory. It's mission-based, but you also make money. And entrepreneurship, getting paid is a part of the deal. Absolutely. Making money, there's right? no time that game. You need even to Even nonprofit. <laughs> I tell people, even as a nonprofit, you have to have revenue to deliver, to deliver the Absolutely. service that you aren't charging for. Somebody has to fund it. Yeah. You have to make the ask, yeah. right? And so really helping people where, when I started out my business, because I came from the corporate setting, right? I didn't exactly know how to package my expertise to profit. And I suffered. Was I serving? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But was I making the money that I needed to thrive and not just survive? No, I wasn't. Because I was giving so much away. And with giving away comes time. And with time, well, guess what? When you're here, you're not showing up elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And so what else started being directly affected? Not only my finances, but my motherhood, my family, right? Being a daughter, being a sister, being a friend, Mm -hmm. being a cousin, being a niece. And then, oh, dating, what? What dating, right? There was no time. (laughs) There was no time for it, right? Yeah. Everything suffered because all my time was being sucked, but I wasn't Mm -hmm. being compensated in a way that would support Mm. my life. And so I, I encourage people, entrepreneurs, don't be booked, busy, and broke. I love right. that. Ah, my yeah. drop. The- <laughs> Don't find yourself booked, busy, and broke. There is a way to package your expertise to profit that is still serving mm-hmm. others. And when mm-hmm. you are getting paid, you show up better because you have something to work from. But when you've got nothing to work with, it's a much more um, egregious. <laughs> process and you will grow to hate entrepreneurship yeah you will feel like it doesn't work for you when the truth is you haven't worked it yeah oh wow I I cannot tell you how my soul is so happy after this interview with you it has been filled filled (laughs) with so many gems of wisdom, so many gems of encouragement and, you know, just perceptions and perspectives. And I know Mm -hmm. that others who are listening will be just as beautifully impacted as I have been today. I mean, absolutely. There's, you know, you have, you have such a gift and (laughs) it is, it is so wonderful. I, It was just so wonderful listening to you and having this conversation with you today. And I'm actually going to put the link of, what is it called? Profit? It's called Roadmap to Profit. Roadmap Roadmap to Profit. I'll put that link in there as well in the show notes. So, you know, if anybody is wanting to look into that, you know, I usually ask my, I love books. I love reading. And then I have like this pile of books sitting next to my bed. But what is, what is your favorite book or books that you'd like to share with us? Oh, okay. So book. The number one that comes to mind is like the five dysfunctions of a team Ah. because people think that conflict, Mm -hmm. right? The conflict is bad. Mm -hmm. And well, as a project manager, as a project consultant, I'm like, give me the one person that everybody runs from because they feel like they're so negative and they're so disgruntled. When I see that person, I see a person who's frustrated because they haven't been heard. I see a person that has something to say. They know they've already identified another way, but they've been pushed aside because of groupthink and people want to do things the way they've always been done because change doesn't feel good. Mm. And I'm like, give me that person. That person is going to become your greatest advocate as soon as they are heard. And they're going to become one of the most positive people that are going to impact other people to see this other way. Mm -hmm. and how to amplify the goodness in the the team that exists, right? And having transparent conversation, conflict, 
Mm -hmm. is not always awful. Mm. Conflict helps you think and find alternative options for the reality that you actually are intended to be going, you know, the direction that you intend to be going in. Mm -hmm. So the five dysfunctions of a team is the one that comes to mind. And forgive me for not <laughs> remembering the author, but you we'll can find it. it. We'll find, we'll find it. it. And then podcasts, there are two. There okay. are two. Right. So one is Tim Allison, Screw the Naysayers. Okay. Screw the Naysayers. And the other one is by Tatum Tamia. And it's Blessed and Bossed Up. And I, it's just, it's all about how to make right infrastructure, basically, like how to make it work for you. Right. So screw the naysayers, people that say, oh, you can't do that. Psh, whatever. I'll find a way. Right. I'll find a way. Yeah. You don't have to help me or you'll come on board once I get it going. Either yeah. way, it's going to happen. Right. And then Bless and Boss Up is all about, which is the root of me, project management. Infrastructure is sexy, folks. Right. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she approaches it from a faith based angle. Yet it's all about saying you can have the brand, you can have the website, you can have the color palette, you can have the logos. That's not bad. However, if you don't have the things, the systems, the processes, the tool, the people in place, to help you grow mm -hmm. your business, to help you sustain the demand for the amazing thing that you have to offer, mm -hmm. it will not last. You will not last. Mm -hmm. And bad PR goes a lot faster than good PR. Mm -hmm. Right? So you don't want to be that, that entrepreneur that people are saying, oh, yeah, she's got a great idea, but she can't help you because she can't keep up. Or he can't, he, he promises, but he doesn't deliver. Right? Mm -hmm. You want to have the systems and things in place. And you want to be conversing with people, collaborating with people, and celebrating with people so that you have what you need in your business so that you can deliver on your good thing. Mm -hmm. Like, don't be afraid to plan. Don't be afraid to have standards and operating procedures. Don't be afraid to, to move in a direction of excellence, not perfection. Yes. Don't be afraid to take imperfect action right? Yes. Test it. Get it out there. Yeah. Try it. You go proficient through practice. Yeah. So let's normalize just like we're normalizing. No is next opportunity. Let's normalize structure as sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should I call my, the title of this episode? So, structure structure is, sexy. is sexy. Right? Like it is, it's liberating. I tell, there's freedom and boundaries, right? Yeah. There's freedom and boundaries. Boundaries aren't what you can't do. It's all of the amazing things that you can do within the mm -hmm. limits of what aren't good for you. That yeah. works in marriage. That works in parenting. That works in finances. That works in, oh, yeah, by the way, business. Mm -hmm. Right? When you know who you are, you know who you are not. And you don't mm -hmm. have to be an imposter to anything because you know exactly what you should be focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Tawana, you are <laughs> seriously very gifted. I am so genuinely like in awe of you right now. Oh, this is and, reciprocity. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but no, seriously, you're amazing. <laughs> and so I, I, I'm just so excited for this episode to air because I know whoever listens to it will walk mm -hmm. away with the beautiful message that you have shared with us today. I am so thankful to have you as a guest and thankful for this friendship that we have made yes. over virtual, you know, right. Zoom. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, Girja. Thank you so much for sharing the space and time. And like you said, each time we talk, it's always like, we can do this all day, but I guess we have a schedule to follow, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, there's always enrichment and um, just, just that good, that good hearted conversation. There's no pressure. There's no airs to be put on. We're just us. Yeah. Living our lives and using all that we've encountered to uplift others and let them know that you're not alone in this. And whatever your it is, you can get through it. Love it. You can get through Love it. it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining Law Chat with Gerja. I love these kind of stories and conversations where we can be real, honest, and open and having fun at the same time. I hope you are inspired and motivated to keep doing the amazing work you are doing. 
If this is something that gave you all those feels and then some, truly motivated and inspired for you. You can show your love in all or one of these ways. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video with your community and tell them about it or share with somebody that can benefit from it. I look forward to seeing you next time on another episode of Law Chat. And until then, keep moving forward. Bye. Mm -hmm.